All right, so the traveling hatchery is in town. Okay. We've got a little project we're working on because we're going to be trading some of our chickens later this year. We'll tell you more about that later. So today's project is to show you what we would pick out if we were starting our flock from scratch. Here we go. Heartland Hatchery is a hatchery or a chick hatching facility in Southwest Missouri. The owners, Alan and his son Miles, do things a little differently. Where other hatcheries only ship their hatch chicks, Alan and Miles take the chicks to the people, specifically to local farm stores where people can ask them questions and buy day-old chicks on the spot. Today they came to our local farm store in St. Joseph, Missouri. <laughs> So I'm here with Alan from Heartland Hatchery. You come to farm stores, local yep. farm stores, all over Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, you even go to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Just happened to be in our neck of the woods today. So we wanted to ask you, if you were starting a flock from scratch, mm -hmm. what kind of breeds would you start with? Well, if you want them for layers, I would go with the sex link. If you want dual purpose to butcher them, I'd get barred rocks or red or white dots. We love variety. We love uniqueness, more rare birds, but then we also love egg colors. I think I saw you were, you were, you had some olive eggers now. Olive eggers, cream lake bars, okay. lay a blue egg, well summers lay the chocolate egg, black cotton marans lay a really colored brown egg, so that's the one. and then Easter eggers lay the green and blue. So let's start with that. Let's start with some different egg colors. A couple of olive eggers to start with. Yeah, where are those at? They're right here. These are olive eggers. Okay. Here are the two of them. Okay. Okay, you want any of the Easter eggers? Yes. We need, uh, what do you think? Two, two of them? Yeah. Okay, a couple of Easter eggers. These will lay like green or blue eggs, right? Yep. On blue chick. Yeah. Black top brands, one of those. That would be these. And these olive eggers keep jumping in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, there's a little. I'm trying to pick out small ones so there'll be more of a chance to get him. Okay, there's two of them. Yep. Uh, you play the different color eggs. would be Scream Lake Bar and, well, Want to stop each of them? Right here, well, well summers. I had to go through and pick the ends out. Okay. You know, have a stripe on their eye. The roosters don't. See the stripe? So those are hens, right? Mm -hmm. And then the green leg bar, the male is fleeced out, and the female is dark. The green leg bars, okay. Okay, so we need, I saw you had a couple different wine dots. Hmm? Blue, lace red, blue lace red. Blue red, and you had a dark blue, and I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that. Uh, the regular blue lace, so and then two of those. is the dark blue lace. The dark blue lace is made by taking a red lace wine dot female and putting a splash rooster on. So that gets you a darker one with the blue lace. That is cool. What other breeds have you added in the last couple of years? Have you seen the dark Brahma? Uh, yeah, I have. I haven't had one. I don't think we've ever had one. Let's do one of those. Dark Brahma. Let's do one dark we Brahma. Sapphire gems. We added those. Throws a blue colored chick. And the rooster, well, they have a rooster spot on its head like a barred rock. They kind of look like the lavender orpingtons. Yeah, they're they're similar. Right? What they are is a uh, Andalusian rooster on a barred rock. Yeah. Sussex. Oh, speckled Sussex. We need one of those. There's one. That's speckled Sussex. Okay. Okay. I've got salmon favorelle. Let's do one of those. Salmon favorelle. There's Polish, Polish, Silky. Lavender. What color you want? Uh, let's do a splat. And then you want a turkin? And then a turkin. That is a chicken starter kit right there. All right, I'm going to get them out because i got to count them up. Ooh, you want one of these? They're real pretty. They're real pretty. That's it. We've got a few extras there. So, Alan, we got a bunch of chicks here. Where do people find out about more about you and your hatchery? Go to my website, heartlandhatchery.net. Click on the Facebook symbol and we have a calendar on there. Call me on Thursday mornings and take orders if you want to order. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you. Good seeing you again. Good to see you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, it's not fucking up too bad. All right, so we got our chicks home from the store. This is one of our old boxes that we got some quail in the mail a few years ago. Do you guys remember that? It's hot out. It's about 95 degrees. So I don't need to put a heat lamp on these chicks, but I need to get a brooder ready for them. We'll be able to put them outside in probably in about a week or so, but right now we want to make sure we control their, their temperature. We want to control the heat and control their, their food, their water. We'll get this set up, get some more wood chips in here, and we've got some little kittens messing with me. Gotta make sure these guys don't get access to the chicks. They might try to eat them. Look at these little guys. So sometimes we'll put them in, dip their beak in the food and the water, I'll give them a moment here and see if they can figure it out. If they don't, then yeah, I'll get some of them over to the water to so make sure that they find it. But usually within an hour or two, they're gonna find it. Chicks are pretty smart. They usually figure it out. Here's a quick one. Oh, there's our turkin. Turkins are super cool. So here's the problem. 
when you go and get chicks or get chicks ordered. When you order chicks, you can come up with a plan because you're doing it online and so you'll keep yourself to some kind of self-control. When you go pick up chicks, you've gotta have a game plan going into it. And so in this case, we were planning on about 15 plus or minus five. Well, when we got to about 15, we were like, all right, maybe like two more, four more, something like that. And, and Alan then, the nice guy that he is, started throwing in a bunch of chicks. I'm already at 12 in here. I've got quite a bit more. I've probably got 10 or 12 more in here. We went with the intention of getting about 15 to 20 and I think we ended up with quite a bit more than 20. I love these little gals. These are the blue lace red wine dots. They are so cool when they are grown up. I cannot remember which breed that was, but that one's looking really cool. I'm excited about this one. I'll have to see if I can remember which one this is, but I love that little white dot on the head. All right, we got a couple of guys starting to eat and drink. Well, starting to eat. Oh, and they're thirsty too, look at this. So the last thing that's important for me is the temperature in there. And with it being about 97 degrees outside, this heater is only gonna make things 10, 20, 30 degrees hotter, and I don't wanna do that. So if I can see that chicks are getting away from the heat, I don't wanna overheat them. And so I'm gonna turn that heat lamp off, and then if they all huddle together because they're cold, I can turn it back on, but I have a feeling they don't need any heat right now. It's been a couple weeks for these chicks. It's getting warm. It's been warm out, so they've definitely outgrown their space. It's time to get them up to the new coop. You gonna help me? Yeah. Looking good. Salmon Favreau. Might be a Welsomer or a Speckled Sussex. What do you think here? Mm. Got feathered feet, uh, blue lace gold Wyandotte, lavender Americana. Oh, look at the head feathers on this one. Oh, that's like the... Uh, cream leg bars? Yeah. Oh, salmon fabble maybe? I don't know. Ooh, that one's pretty. Ooh, look at you. So these guys are a couple weeks old. So we like to get them out on grass as soon as possible, usually within a week or two weeks, depending on the weather outside. And also it depends on space. We finally got some space freed up for them. So now they're able to be out here for the next couple months until they'd move in with the main flock or the banana flock, which most of these guys are gonna be with the main flock. And they're gonna be part of either our future flock or part of the trade we're gonna do down the road. Today's video is sponsored from HelloFresh. Let's see what they got. HelloFresh is so delicious. Every HelloFresh recipe includes right, just picked produce that travels from the farm to your door in less than a week. We have fully well tortured tea. Toes. I got some <laughs> bound perk. All right, we're gonna make some fully loaded, loaded. Oh man, <laughs> we're gonna make some fully loaded pork taquitos, and they're gonna show us step by step of how to make this. Let's see if we can figure it out. You can save time, money, and stress with HelloFresh's line of kid-friendly recipes that are picky eater proof. Perfect for families looking to try something new this school year. So now we're gonna take this sheet. You guys gonna help me here? It says it's gonna take about five minutes of prep time and about 30 minutes to cook. Think we can do it that fast? Yeah. HelloFresh helps you reach your goals with their fit and wholesome recipes that make it <laughs> easy to eat well without sacrificing flavor. All oh, right, now I'm putting the pork in. The... You can maintain your goals and feel good about your food choices. I'm gonna open up the Tex-Mex sauce. Some olive oil on both sides of these tortillas. Good job. So we're gonna add the meat mixture with some cheese. All right, we're gonna put it on the middle rack in the oven until it's golden brown and crispy. And with the recipes that include pre-portioned ingredients, that means less prep for you and less wasted food, HelloFresh helps you eat more sustainably. Nice job, Eli. Looks good. Ooh, doesn't that look amazing? Yes, and it was so easy. What do you think, babe? Best taquitos you've ever had? Yeah. That's really good. Good job, Eli. If you can get this for yourself, just go to HelloFresh.com, use the code WHITEHOUSE65, and get 65% off plus free shipping. Super good. <laughs> just go to HelloFresh.com and use the code WHITEHOUSE65 for 65% off plus free shipping. It's good. Hi there. Hi.
So the Heartland Hatchery chicks are a couple months old now. We've got important things to do that involve them today where we need to move all of our animals, except for the cows, I guess, and the pond ducks. We're gonna move all of them to the west side of the property. And so right here, we've got our Indio Gantes. We've got our rooster flock with the turkeys. We've got our main flock. And then we have all of our chicken tractors over there. And so we're gonna take all of them today and then the main flock will move tomorrow, but we're gonna move them over to the west side so we can get prepared for winter. We've already got our pigs over there, but it's gonna take some effort. It's gonna take a lot of lifting. We're gonna probably load up some of the chicken tractors onto a trailer and move them over, but we'll be able to touch base with all of the animals here while we're doing this. Oh no! Chicken's free. So here's our white peacock. He's all by himself now. His mom, the red cochin, she passed away. So there's a chance there was some kind of disease passing through all the peacocks that ended up passing along to the, the red cochin. One day she was fine and all of a sudden she just, she was out. He's going to be here in the Indio Gante yard inside his coop until we open up the aviary and then we'll, we'll move him in there. But I'm still a little concerned if there's some kind of disease, is that going to spread to the other birds in the aviary? I don't know. So the next thing we've got to do is catch all of these roosters and turkeys and move them over to a new spot. We're actually going to divide them out. Uh, the Indio Gante rooster is pretty mean to these little ones. So we're going to keep him in with the turkeys and then put all the roosters into a flock. But for now we need to move them over so we can move all this spot out. This building is not, not super mobile, but we've moved it once before. We've built some wheels on there. So anyways, we've got to catch all the turkeys and roosters. Yeah, it'd be easier at night, but we wouldn't be able to move that building though at night. So moving them to a spot, moving their house, and then hopefully this will work out all right. Joey's already worked. <laughs> all right, so we're over here at the chicken tractors. We've got six of our larger chicken tractors or John Siskovich stress-free chicken tractors. And we've got one of the little ones where the two month old chicks will be. And we're gonna move them over into one of these bigger ones, but we're gonna move them all to the other side of the yard. So let's get these loaded up. I've got a trailer here to pull them up onto. Only problem is gonna be to collect all the birds, but this will keep us from having to manually pull them to the whole other side of the yard is that we can load them up on the trailer, move the birds over, move the chicken tractors over one at a time. Here's the Samo Fable. All right, so we've got about 15 of them in the box so far. We're gonna move them over and then we'll come back and get the rest. Right. Ooh, we got dark Rama there. Ooh, there's a speckled Sussex. Speckled Sussex. Oh, it's so pretty. Did you say golden lace wine dot? Wine. I think that might be a well summer there. Black copper lands. A splash coaching or something. I got that this one. Yeah. That's my favorite. That's your favorite? So there's a, there's some light Brahmas and some, or I don't know what the medium. They have feather feet? Yeah. All right. So we're going to come back and check on these guys, but we're going to keep moving over chicken tractors. we got to get that done before it gets too late. Now, so. <laughs> quick. Here they come. You guys coming? Ah! So we've got Blaze here and then our five females. Actually I think we got four and maybe one male. All right there's Blaze. This guy's magnificent. Beautiful tail. Can't wait to get this guy into the aviary. He's gonna be awesome. All right there's Blue the peacock. We'll take him over to a new spot. Last move until he goes to the aviary. Come on, Blue. Come on, buddy. There you go, bud. Okay. So the beautiful thing about this mobile coop is that it's mobile. And so we can move it from spot to spot. We haven't moved it, but once or twice this year. But here before winter, we want to get off this spot, give this little piece of ground some rest. So we hook it up to the UTV or the tractor, lift up the, the jacks on it, and we're able to roll it to a new spot. We got to find a, a relatively level spot, which is a little tricky on our property because it's flat in the middle, and then it starts to slope to the outsides. And so we're going to do it here on the outside, but try to find a relatively flat spot. So we just hooked it up, we're going to roll it over, get them all set up, and get them to a new spot for winter. All right, they're all moved, so let's open them up and let them out. Oh, a white dog. White, white Moran. Johnny. 
All right, so we got this place all leveled, all ready to go, they're out. Now let's show you what this space looks like with everything moved over and then let those chicks out for the first time. So you can see where the chicken tractors used to be on the east side of the property and all of the bird and pig areas behind the barn. Now everything's neatly organized and lined up on the west side of the property. It gives us a change of scenery. The animals get fresh grass after the hay was recently cut. And we're all set up for winter so we can take care of the chores a little quicker each morning with so much of them lined up together, followed by the main coop and the chicken tractors. Now let's open up the Heartland chicks and let them out. All right, so we're getting ready to let these chicks out for the first time. It's always a fun time when we get to let them run around, spread their wings, and get some fresh grass. It's my heart. That's your favorite chicken? Yes. I think that's the, the blue lace gold or the gold lace. Oh, uh, so pretty. So I can't remember what breed this was. It's a little bit of a floof on the head, but this one's going to turn out to be a rooster, which is a big bummer. But this coloring is so, so amazing. Hey, your favorite can't be my favorite. <laughs> That's your favorite? Yeah. Yeah, I think this is our, our white or splash cochin. So this one's a, a full-size cochin. We're, in the past, we've had a lot of bantam cochin. So same bird we always love, but it's a little bigger. So we have a couple projects that we're excited about this month. We've been working hard on the aviary. We can't wait to show you the progress we've been making on it. We have our ducks, the hookbills, squeakers, and quackers down at the pond. We might show you what they've been up to. And our cow, Dolly, is due with a calf this month. Hopefully, we'll have an exciting update with that sometime Dolly. soon. See you guys next time.